Hi there. I am Dr. David Hall, and I'm going to talk about the Robotic Vision Scene Understanding Challenge in association with the CBPR21 workshop on embodied AI systems. The Robotic Vision Scene Understanding Challenge was supported by the Australian Centre for Robotic Vision and the QUT Centre for Robotics. Before I get going too much, I would like to acknowledge that I am but a small part of the team that made this thing possible. So I'd like to acknowledge all of the work from all of our team members, both past and present, for making the challenge what it is today. So, what is the Robotic Vision Scene Understanding Challenge, and what is it that we wanted participants to do? Well, we split our challenge up into two distinct tasks, a semantic slam task and a scene change detection task. For the semantic slam task, what we wanted people to do was to have an autonomous agent that is able to explore an environment and map out various objects of interest within that environment. So things like tables, chairs, books, etc. And to create a 3D cuboid map of that environment, such as the one that you see below. Participants are then evaluated based on how well their 3D cuboid map matches the ground truth map for that environment. The second task is very similar, and that scene change detection has to traverse the environment twice, however. Between these two traversals, there may be some lighting variations, such as you see here between daytime and nighttime, but more specifically, there are going to be some objects which have been moved, such as this chair here, and there will be some objects which have been added, such as this monitor that you see here. And the goal is to create a 3D cuboid map, like we saw before, but only of these changes. What objects were added, which objects were removed. And then you are evaluated based on how accurate your map is to the ground truth changes map. We provided several environments for this challenge, two of which were kept as um, development environments where the 3D uh, ground truth object maps were provided, and three where the maps were withheld for challenge testing purposes. For each of the five base environments, we created five variations of said environments for both providing variety to the challenge and for the scene change detection challenge in specific. And of these five variations, there was always two that were nighttime versions of these environments. As it is a fairly challenging task, and we were hoping to bridge the gap between the computer vision and the robotic vision communities, we provide three different challenge difficulty levels that people could participate with it. The simplest is a passive mode with ground truth uh, pose information provided. Here, the task is simplified down to simply processing the data that is supplied by a robotic agent. It moves between a set of predefined uh, nodes and is provided with ground truth information. All that is required is to be able to detect objects and to map objects out into the scene. At the second difficulty level, we have an active control of the movement, but still provide ground truth pose. So now the challenge is expanded as you need to autonomously explore, um, navigate, and avoid obstacles, but you are still provided with ground truth pose information, so you don't need to worry about the localization challenge. All control is done using a simple API of rotations and uh, moving forwards and backwards. Now the most difficult difficulty level is active with dead reckoning. Here we provide the robot instead with um, noisy odometry information instead of the ground truth pose that was given before. So now the task is expanded to also include localization as a task to be considered for as part of the robotic system. Now because we had these different challenge tasks and difficulty levels, we were able to split up our prize pool accordingly and rewarding more heavily the more challenging tasks. So starting from the semantic slam with passive ground truth mode, all the way to scene change detection with active dead reckoning. We provided uh, monetary prizes that were sponsored by the Australian Centre for Robotic Vision, and we had GPU prizes available that were sponsored by NVIDIA. So thank you very much to both those organisations for sponsoring this challenge. The challenge itself was built upon the Benchbot framework, which is our way of providing a simple API for robot control. Uh, this uh, framework enables sim to real transfer um, for participants who were um, confident enough in their ability and wanted to experiment on their uh, approach after the challenge itself. And it is a framework which is adaptable for many challenges, not just uh, scene understanding, though scene understanding is the first version of this uh, framework being used. The underlying sim being utilized is the NVIDIA Isaac sim, specifically version 2019.2, uh, if you are interested. And uh, more information can be found on benchbot.org if you want to use it for your own research. So we pro 
uh, we submitted three different baselines to our challenge leaderboards, um, and these baselines were um, baselines created without any sort of novel research being done, just the cobbling together of various simple pre-existing um, algorithms that are available. We did two of them for Semantic Slam Passive Ground Truth and one of them for Semantic Slam Active Ground Truth. So our first baseline for Semantic Slam Passive Ground Truth was simply using the tutorial code that was available on the Benchbot website. This created a semantic map using VoteNet and some basic filtering and achieved an object map quality or OMQ score of 0.11. Object map quality is an evaluation measure that we created specifically for this challenge that I'm not going to get into right now, but simply know that zero is bad and one is good. Our second baseline was a bit more complicated and combines, but still just combined some existing methods to, and made some simple assumptions to get a better score. So we fused the output from a high performing object detection system and fused that with a depth segmentation algorithm that was uh, available to create object databases. We merged any overlapping objects from in this database when creating our final map, and then we post-processed the uh, cuboids, the final cuboids that we had in our object map. So making assumptions such as big objects like tables and chairs had to exist on the ground plane, and small objects would be restricted in size. So we're not going to have giant bananas within the room, for example. Um, and this managed this simple cobbling together of um, existing techniques managed to achieve an OMQ score of 0.44. As you can see here, the results weren't perfect, so ground truth um, bounding boxes are shown in red, and our outputs are shown in blue. And you can see that it misses some objects and isn't got correct alignment, but it was a solid starting point for people to build upon. Um, we also created a an active control. Um, baseline, where we simply used um, the same mapping algorithm as our passive ground truth, but we implemented a random walk algorithm that was used until the robot crashed into something. And once it crashed into something, we said, all right, you're done. Let's make the map. Uh, this uh, simple random walk used a laser scan to divide um, possible regions of movement into five distinct locations. And we moved in the direction which had the maximum average distance available. So for instance, if zone two had the highest average distance, it would move towards zone two. And this achieved a reasonable OMQ score of 0 0.37, despite the fact that when we look at its trajectories, the control was definitely not optimal. Um, there's, and this is why the active control of the robot is such an exciting area of active research, because there is so much that could be done to uh, help the system evolve further from this point. So, in terms of the actual challenge itself, we opened on February 17th and ran until May 31st. We had a fair bit of community engagement, both through our GitHub issues and our Slack workspace, which is where people were able to directly communicate with ourselves and other participants to talk about this and other ones of our um, robotic vision challenges. But sadly, on our final leaderboard, we only had one external submission to our Semantic Slam Passive Grand Truth leaderboard. Uh, but big um, congratulations and thanks to the Edith Cohen University submission for showing the interest in the challenge. Um, whilst they were on the leaderboard, they sadly do, were not able to exceed our um, baseline submission. Um, but we did find out from them that what they did was a variation of the VoteNet approach um, that was available from the Benchbot tutorial code. So big congratulations and thanks to that team for participating in the challenge. So conclusions on this challenge and the future directions uh, for this challenge and research. Um, well, first of all, it's definitely a very challenging area of research with a lot of potential yet to be unlocked. Um, very excited to see what might happen in the active navigation and exploration um, fields of research. Our object detection to 3D object map is still obviously not perfect, as otherwise we'd be getting perfect passive ground truth mode um, results. Um, and it will be interesting to see um, what happens in terms of detecting changes in scenes for a scene change detection challenge, as we did not see any submissions um, in that leaderboard. Um, it is very exciting to see all the tools that are now available to help aid enable rapid research in the area of embodied AI and challenges such as the scene understanding challenge. So beyond just the benchmark tool that we have made available for this and other challenges, there are so many things that are a part of this workshop. Um, that are exciting to see and that will be interesting to see where this field develops in the future. Um, 
For our challenge in specific, though, we will also be providing a version of our evaluation website um, publicly available for long-term research um, so that people can continue to work on and develop algorithms for um, this specific challenge. In terms of ourselves, we will continue trying to contribute to research in this area, um, and we hope to um, perform some research ourselves in solving these difficult challenges that we have put forward to the rest of the community. Um, so uh, thank you for listening to the talk. Um, thank you on behalf of um, the entire team. If you're interested in this challenge or in any of our other robot vision scene, uh, robotic vision challenges, uh, please get in touch. If you want to be part of our community that talks about these sort of challenges, uh, please talk to us on our Slack workspace. Uh, thank you very much for your time, and bye-bye. Uh,